time with Herman and Sharon. All right, let's begin this Hello, day. Hello, everybody. This is going to be a We're great. Here. This is going to be a great day. Yes, it is. Just because we know the Lord is our personal Savior. Exactly. Isn't that great? To, He's always to, with us. To know that no matter what happens. That's right. To be absent from the body. To be present with the Lord. Boy, you, you're good. I, I try to be. <laughs> 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 he's he's being funny today, you know. He's just, today, I can tell. I today, never know what's going to come out of his mouth when he's like this. But I'm prepared. <laughs> That's right. That's right. I'm kind of whacked. <laughs> you yeah. you wouldn't want to have known me when I was no, a wild, unsaved we're, guy. We're not going to talk about that anymore. You know, that it's been the past. She, and everything's great. And it's been how many years since? She so. just she just hates when I talk I about do. my past. I do. Forget about it. We have a wonderful guy. This guy is. He's on a lot of Christian television programs. I just saw him recently. Really? On my good friend, Jim and Lori Baker show. Oh, yes. I like them very much. He's a good friend of mine, but you would never know it. <laughs> because oh. Jim, Jim Baker. Because he, I used to have his phone number. Oh, Herman. And you know, these, you know these high-profile personalities? They change their <laughs> cell no number about every other month. Because well, take the hint. <laughs> yeah, no. You know, the thing of it is, if he wanted to, to call you, that he would. So, I mean, he's got your number, doesn't he? It, yeah, he's got my number for sure, yeah. But we, just, still, we love him. They're but, busy, very busy people. Yeah, I know it, I know. He's building another city. Yes, he is. <laughs> we're going to surprise him and go out there someday, though, yeah, and really blow his mind. I know. We'll be in the audience. He won't know we're there. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. And, but but, but he, he tapes his shows. Yes. And then he edits all kinds of stuff. He, he does what, what I would dream of having available to me to do. Yeah. And he has all of the equipment that you could ever dream of. Take a look at this book, guys. Yeah. Look at that. That's what we're talking about today. I mean, uh, this is probably one of the most popular subjects you can have. Uh -huh. Mark Blitz is a, he, he is brilliant. Well, good. I want to hear what he's got to you, say, though. He's actually physically good. here. Good. Let's go meet okay, him. Okay, here he comes, right here. <laughs> Here he comes. Hey, Mark, come on in. Come on, we're serving breakfast right over here. <laughs> Yay! Yeah, good, to, good to have you. Good to Hello. have you. Good to, have you, to be go, here. You, you go at about six foot? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Say, so you, you, you have good DNA. Have a seat. Thank you. You have good DNA. <laughs> was, your, was your dad tall? Yes, and I have a brother, two brothers taller than me. I'm the short one of the family. Really? Yes. My goodness. I'm serving water today. My, my well, dad. Well, thank you. <laughs> Our assistant, our assistant, no, uh, right. she, she does it very faithfully. Yes, Here's does. what I do, honey. When you want to get those off of here, you just do like that. Just. But my oh, dad I'm was. Not gonna, I'm not going to do that with this one. My, my dad was five three. Okay. And so I I, I reached uh, five eight, but now that I'm eighty, I'm five seven. Oh my goodness! You lose it. You lose an inch. You know that? Do I you lose it in my waist as well? <laughs> no, no, just the, <laughs> just the height. Just oh, okay. The height. I, I've got to show you something. Uh, uh, take a look at my cap here. I love it. See that? Uh, Linda Opsel brought this from Jerusalem a number of years over. She uh, she went to Jerusalem, and all she gave me was a cap when she got. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> Did you bring this? Okay. Oh, that's oh, right. Oh, that's too. right. I should have brought that down. Yeah. But but look what I did. I took my my magic marker. Uh, uh, Mark, take a look at the screen. Oh, okay. See in the middle USA. The USA. And I've always looked at that and said, does anybody realize in the center of Jerusalem, USA, the country that loves them, that protects them, that watches over them, and now our embassy. Yes. Because of Donald Trump. Yes. Is in Jerusalem. Amen. Were you there when they when they dedicated that? No. Because I figured guys like you. But anyway, I had to, I had to show that. But USA, isn't that neat? Right yeah. in the center oh, of Jerusalem. J-E-R-U-S-A-L-E-M. Yes. yes, I Why was there about a month before. I want to hear more about who you are, Mark. Well, okay, here tell we, us about yourself. Okay, tell us about yourself because I've got it all right here. Yeah, but and I since you him. say it better than <laughs> I could read it, <laughs> tell That's us. Right. Well, uh, I started LCDI Ministries uh, about 18 years ago. I was raised a Catholic. Okay, okay, for 20 years. Uh -huh. uh, and then uh, I got saved about 19 years old, 20 years old, 
and uh, I joined a Christian youth ministry. Uh, some of my teachers were like Leonard Ravenhill. Oh, yes. Uh, yeah, uh, David Wilkerson was my next door neighbor. I played Goodness ping pong with him. Gracious. You know, Are you serious? Yeah. Yeah, and uh, so I kind of trained under like Winky Pratney, I don't know if you know him, but different people for a couple of years. Now, Nikki Cruz was led to the Lord by... Yes, by David Wilkerson, yeah. yes, yes. In fact, in fact, uh, Nikki Cruz gave his testimony, he said he spit in his face when he's trying to reach, he was trying to reach him with, wow. he was a gang leader, the yeah. Mau Mau's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so uh, I had, uh, I, you know, I was a basket case at 19, yeah. you know, and I got saved and joined this ministry, and then I uh, lived in Kansas, and I've been there for 30 years, and then I moved to Seattle for 30 years. Oh, I love Seattle. Oh, it's beautiful. The it's only problem is it's the most liberal place outside of Los it's Angeles. It's the dark, as they say, in Washington State. Or States. San Francisco, yeah. yeah. Washington State's one of the most unchurched states in all the whole country, yeah. Washington and Oregon. It's a dark yeah. place up there. But I started this ministry about 20 years ago, eight, 19 years ago, uh, in a person's house, you know, just a couple of us. And uh, then we grew to around 800 people, and we have an wow. internet congregation of about 250,000. You are a good leader. Yeah, oh, I don't know. You are a smart, le- I mean, you, you read this book, and I'm going, how does a guy compile that kind of information? Because when you're writing a book, man, you got to be dead on. Yeah. You can't just sit down and go, okay, I think this is the way it is. Right. Well, I I had, uh, you know, uh, I took a lot of time studying this. Plus, I had good mentors that helped me with the Islamic section. See, most Christians don't know the Islamic view of end times. And I think they need to know that. And many of them don't know the Jewish view of end times. Uh, and so I wanted to bring that out in the book. But we, I also... We, we're going to... We got your friend in yes, the audience, okay? Yes. And we're going to have him on... Uh, down the road. Yeah, he's the one who helped me with the Islamic section Seriously. to make sure. He's the one that helped me with so that tell to make me sure. about the Islamic view of end times. What is their view of end times? Well, they have. What's fascinating to me is, of the three monotheistic religions, you have Islam, Judaism, Christianity. They all three have a, like an antichrist. And what's amazing, everyone's Messiah is the other one's antichrist. In other words, in Islam, they have what's called the Dajjal. All right, and he's their antichrist, but they believe he's the Jewish Messiah. And the Jews believe their antichrist is the Christian Messiah. And many Christians believe their antichrist will be the Islamic Messiah. And uh, in Islam, what I found was so interesting, they have a Messiah known as the Mahdi, okay, who's supposed to come and, you know, bring their view of peace on earth. Uh, But they have two Jesus. Jesus does return, but there's two Jesus who returns. There's a real Jesus and a fake Jesus. And guess how you know the difference, how the Islamists will know the difference between the fake Jesus and the real Jesus. The fake Jesus loves the Jewish people. The real Jesus can't stand the Jewish people. Oh, and okay. that's what they teach in their mind. You know, and they have a beast that even rises, you know, out of the earth. So there's a lot of similarities. Mm-hmm. Decoding yes. the Antichrist. Yes. How in the world do you start on that one? Well, to and, me, and not, not only that, I get you. You got to wait for the rest of this program because I mean, you may <laughs> you may tune in and go, okay, I've had enough. I got to move on. No, no, no. At we're going to get in to how he feels about Solomon. <laughs> what did you think of that? I mean, I, I, well, I got to tell you this. I watched you on Jim Baker. Okay. And and you're trashing Solomon, and I'm going. <laughs> I'm sitting there in my in my uh, uh, office. I'm going. Are you kidding me? I, I thought he was the best thing going. And I, I mean, he just went, but, but I, my, my son-in-law, who is a theologian, he's a, has a doctorate in theology. <laughs> and so I, I, I said, what do you think about Solomon? I said, I, I watched this guy, because he didn't know you. I, I said, I watched this guy and he's trashing Solomon. He goes, well, he wasn't a very good guy. And I go, what? He said, well, he <laughs> said, for one thing, he had 900 wives. Yeah, so right there, yeah. you know, he had a problem. <laughs> so, so anyway, stay with us because we're going to get into that yeah. a little later. But continue where you're going on the, on the decoding. Well, sure. Uh, to me, well, where we're at with artificial intelligence as well, it is amazing to me what is going on where they can even put br- uh, AI chips in your brain. They have human cyborgs, you know. And so for me, it's like, could the Antichrist... Uh, you know, many people wonder, is he going to be Islamic? Is he going to be Jewish? Well, I uh, propose... He used to be, he's going to be a German. Yeah. Yeah. But I propose, could he be a Christian that is not really a believer? 
but as someone who comes across as a Christian. And maybe has a television program on the Christian networks. Well, he, yeah, who yeah, knows? Just, I just thought I'd throw that in there. <laughs> <laughs> who knows? Yeah. But uh, I think we need to look at finding out a little bit more. And the way I decode it, too many Christians forever have been trying to figure out who the Antichrist is. But I think we need to profile the Antichrist position so we get a better idea of how he will operate. What's his modus operandi? Because John said in his epistle that we're already living in the last days. There were many Antichrists, and he said they came out from among us. That's true. And so when we look at and how Jesus says, well, in the, through Paul, uh, how Satan comes as an angel of light. His ministers are ministers of righteousness. And they have personalities that are phenomenal. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Uh, that, uh, that's the Antichrist. Well, that's the Do Antichrist. Do you think spirit? me in this, maybe because, I mean, Sharon and I are pretty well ready for the, you know. <laughs> Get me out of here. <laughs> but, but do you think that, that Christians will see the Antichrist? Because we've always heard about the rapture. Uh -huh. Okay. It's like whatever bad is going to happen, right. you're going to be taken out. Right, which, which I don't buy. I don't buy completely, but that's okay. But but what I'm saying is, do you think Christians will actually see the Antichrist? I, I think there's a good chance we will. Uh, but what's interesting is to me, it's the Antichrist spirit we need to look at, and it's called legalized lawlessness. If we just legalize what's illegal, many Christians will think, well, then it's okay. Like I have a friend of mine whose daughter uh, says there's nothing wrong with abortion because it's legal. They right. don't even look at the ethical uh, parameters. And I believe we're living in a time where we believe if we just legalize abortion, we just legalize, uh, uh, legalize prostitution, legalize drugs, okay. legalize gay marriage, yeah. then everything's okay. So our morality is coming from uh, Greek philosophy, from humanism, from things like that. We're not getting it from the Bible. But then if you don't agree with that, say you're more a biblical thinking as the Bible, then you're a hater, and then they're going to come down on you. Isn't that amazing? That's what it yes. says. They call evil good and good evil. Exactly. Well, all of a sudden, having a border wall is immoral, but infanticide is okay. You know, and so it's like, wow, we've, we're living in a time of legalized lawlessness. Well, you look at Planned Parenthood, for goodness sake. Oh, sakes. my goodness. I mean, I mean, you can pull the babies apart yes. and lay them on the table and sell them. Uh, that's what they're after, is selling the parts. Or killing them after they're born. Yeah, in exactly, and, exactly. And, and yet they protect the turtles. <laughs> oh, <laughs> and well. the insects. <laughs> I, I mean, it's it's amazing. The it's schizophrenic. Well, think about this. You've heard about the cars that don't have a driver. A computer drives yeah, uh -huh. the car. That's the big thing now. And yeah. you, as a passenger, sitting in the back seat. What they've decided with this computerized car. They have to, re they've realized they need to create a moral artificial intelligence computer that has morals. And guess who gets to determine the morality? Because here's what's happening. You're in the back seat, the computer's driving the car, and the deer runs in front of the car. Well, the computer has to decide, do I run over the deer? Do I swerve and run over two passengers to avoid, or two people, pedestrians? Do I run over two pedestrians to save the deer? Or do I take the driver over the edge of the cliff? I have the answer to that. Which one? How the, how the guy that's head of Google and Facebook would determine. Can you imagine if kill they determined? The, kill the humans. So would, would you want a car driven by a morality yeah. computer that that is their morality, yeah. their choice? Yeah. You know, I've never thought of that before. That is amazing when you think about it. And, and not only that, they're giving your Alexa and your Siri that you can have in your home, that you can tell Siri what's the weather. <laughs> Guess what? It also has a moral AI, artificial intelligence. And if they hear the parents say, you go to bed or I'm going to spank you, they will call 911 on the parent and the police can arrive at your home. Are you serious? I am serious. Yeah. This You're is not making this up. No. That no. Yeah, I, one bit. My grandson gave me a Google one. Will you speak to it? Oh, right, right. This actually happened. For Christmas. For Christmas. Okay. So you, you ask anything you want, you know, like, like yeah, I like Elvis, you know. Uh, tell me about Elvis's latest song, right. what, you know, right. this kind of thing. And so I'm sitting there one night by myself, and, and so it tells you how to turn it off. So you do a little thing on the top, and it turns to yellow, and get, these little, little lights go on, and that means it's off. So I did that. So I'm sitting there and I'm thinking, Google, 
wake up? <laughs> no, no, I, all I said was, Google, are you still on? Voice comes on, I cannot answer that. I go, I just turned it off. It's still on. It's still on. Of it's course answer, it is. It's answering me. Of course it is. And so I went over and unplugged, unplugged it. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, that actually happened to me. Oh, I'm not, yeah. Well, I, this is an embarrassing situation. I'm up in my bedroom, and my wife has this little Alexa Siri yeah, thing yeah, in yeah. the bathroom because she likes to play music. She'll play this music, yeah, and it'll sure. play. Okay, so I'm on the phone talking to someone, and all of a sudden, this device saying, I don't understand, please, you know, what were you saying? And I tell my friend on the phone, oh, my wife's name is Vicky. And I go, oh, Vicky's stupid Alexa came back on. And then all of a sudden, the Alexa comes on. What do you mean, Vicky's stupid? That's not what I said. I said you're her stupid oh, wow. Alexa. Oh, you know, but it's like, it's, oh, yeah. It's spooky, isn't they're, it? They're listening. Uh, they are listening to everything can, that you say. Can you imagine? Yeah, I mean, you're a lot younger than I am. But can you imagine seeing a day that we're seeing mm. right now? Unbelievable. Unbelievable. The, the fact that uh, they can do things, you know, put in computer chips in our bodies. Uh, the, the whole concept, what they want to do is put an a AI computer chip in your brain that connects directly to the Internet. And your thoughts, you can automatically, if you want to know the, the French word for potato, it'll just, uh, uh, in your mind, you'll know the answer. I, I understand that Christians, I mean, you're hearing this quite often. Yes. It's going to be that they're going to move against the Christian community sure. in America, sure. and that it's coming out of Washington D.C. and all we got to—I mean, these socialists that are now running right. uh, on the Democratic Party. Yes, if they take over Congress, our Supreme Court, because they're trying to increase the Supreme right. Court, oh, yeah. add more right. judges, right, so that they can pack the court. Sure, all of that. You can see that down the road, mm -hmm. they would come against. Programs like this. This reason when we when when I I have a Bible study where I do it with my uh, with, with Dr. David, uh, 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 my son-in-law who is a, a, a Bible teacher, and every time I come on with that program, I think yeah. I am honored to be here because this is not always going to be. Yes, there there is a Democratic. A person running for president this, you know, for the next election named Andrew Yang. I don't know if you've heard of him. Yeah, I have. He is wanting to implement the Chinese social credit score here. With this Chinese social credit score, they look at all your social posts, media posts, and if they don't like what they're seeing, they will lower your credit score where you cannot have a passport, you cannot take a plane, you cannot take yeah. a train, you cannot own a pet. Uh, and so that's what they're doing. And it's our, they have over 200 million AI cameras in China with facial recognition that they know exactly uh, who you are and where you go and what you do. Brooke, how much time do we have left? Where's Brooke at? Does she, did, did she, how many? Ten minutes. Ten minutes. Okay. Let's talk about Solomon. Sure. How did you get this attitude about Solomon. <laughs> but, I mean, he covers a whole chapter. But, uh, okay, <clears throat> begin, if you can bring back what you said on Jim Baker, that would be great. Because I know even Jim Baker, I was watching him, his body language, off. he was going like this. It, it, it's amazing. Okay, S step into that arena. Well, I think one of the reasons why many will be deceived about who the Antichrist is is because they look for King Solomon as this great king that can bring peace in the Middle East. And if we just find someone like a King Solomon who can bring peace in the Middle East, it'll solve all the world's problems. But Solomon was the narcissist in chief. Solomon, it was all about him building his kingdom. As a matter of fact, he was whining. Here he had all the wealth. He had all the power, all, all the authority, the faith. And yet, he in Ecclesiastes, he writes, I, everything I've done is vain because I have to leave everything to someone else. That's what he said. And everything... Wealthy people feel that way. Uh, of Seriously. course. Really. Oh, yeah. I've, I've known a few. It's like, I've worked all this, and, and, and when I die, my wife is going to marry some guy. He's going to spend it all. You so, mean there's so, not a U-Haul that's following him to the grave with everything he has? Yeah. <laughs> but... Uh, Everything that God said a king was not to do, Solomon did. He multiplied wives. He married foreign wives. He multiplied silver and gold. He multiplied horses. Everything God said the king is not to do. And not only that, 
He was an arms merchant. What do you think would happen today if Netanyahu sold uh, Iran nuclear material? They think he was nuts. Well, Solomon was commanded not to go back to Egypt and multiply horses. Solomon goes back to Egypt. Of course, he marries Pharaoh's daughter. And what does he do? The modern day tank back then was the horse and the chariot. And it says he would buy horses and chariots and then it'd sell them to the enemy. He was selling them to the Hittites and all the other ites. So here Solomon is doing everything against God and he, he is... But God chose him. That's what makes it so horrible. Can you imagine, instead of the... Well, after his reign, the whole kingdom is divided. It all goes to pot, okay? If Solomon would have used all of his wealth, all of his wisdom, his fame, his power to build God's kingdom, the world would be a different place today. Don't you think maybe that God was trying to tell people that intellect isn't the answer? Exactly. He's the smartest man that ever lived. And richest. Yeah. <clears throat> well, think about this. A lot of Christians misunderstand this. They look at things if they're good or evil. But good and evil was on the same tree that they That's ate right. of. The question isn't good or evil, it's life or death. There was the tree of life and the tree of death. And good and evil and wisdom was all on this tree. And the reason why is we can use those things to advance our own kingdom rather than God's kingdom. And we always need to choose life. But Solomon, this is what's mind blowing. Solomon was the first king in Israel to institute child sacrifice and he offered his own firstborn to Molech. It's in the Bible and, and nobody sees it. Uh, he is the one who instituted child sacrifice. He was the first one. And not only that, guess how much gold came into Solomon every year? 666. It says right there in King, 666 talents of gold. And here when we That's think... That's a lot of gold. Well, when you think of the book of Revelation, here is wisdom and what is Solomon associated with? Wisdom. It's the number of a man and the number is 666. And then here, what does he have? 666 talents of gold coming in. And did you know in the Gospels, Jesus was rebuking King Solomon, and most Christians aren't aware of it because they don't know Jewish history. But when he talked about the rich man who had all these great goods and he's going to tear down his barn and build bigger barns, remember that story in the Gospels? Sure well, what happens? It's the, the rich man says, well, there's nothing better to do than to eat, drink, and be merry. And then God says, you fool, this not your soul will be required of you. Guess where that eat, drink, and be merry came from? Ecclesiastes. Solomon wrote that there was nothing better to do than to eat, drink, and be merry. So that gospel story was directly a rebuke against Solomon. He was one of the writers of Proverbs. Have you ever read Proverbs? Yes, I've read do, Proverbs. Are you blessed by Proverbs? I'm, I'm very blessed by Proverbs. Yes. Well, if you remember, God also used Balaam. The, well, and, Balaam, and, well, and Balaam a donkey. was an ungodly guy. Uh, yeah. Solomon was a, was a believer. Balaam well, was not a believer. But I tell you what, Satan was a believer at one time. I mean, you Satan, must, you, you, <laughs> Satan you, knew who God was. He was must, on the worship team. You must be Armenian in theology. <laughs> <laughs> Am I right? Well, uh, I'll, well, well, the thing is this. Well, I, I believe, uh, I, I'm not a Calvinist at all. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, but I, so I don't know what if is I your go, background? I mean, you, you, were, you were Catholic. I was and Catholic so for 20 years. Pentecostal, Pentecostal okay. for 20 yeah, years. Okay, that's Armenian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then, but now I've been studying the Jewish roots for 20 years. Mm -hmm. So we, every, I mean, my theology, you know, it's it's changed over time, and uh, I just I I'll probably be more Armenian than Calvinistic. But at the same so you time, think you I can wouldn't lose call myself. Well, that's a good question. I don't think I can lose it. Like, which way did it go? Where did it go? You okay. know, but I think uh, it's possible I could throw it away. Well, when he says that I've got you in time, I have yeah, exactly. And you cannot remove that. Yeah, I think, I think that's very important. But that's God saying that. Yeah, that's you. God saying that. Yeah. yeah. So I think it's very important that we do recognize. I, I see both. I, I see a little mixture of both. I understand the election, and uh, so. But I, I think what's what's most important is it's our relationship. So did I get a little glimpse of you have doubts if Solomon will be in heaven? No, and the reason why is because I don't keep the book. I, that's above my pay grade. You know, people will ask me, the Jews that went through the Holocaust, are they going to heaven or not? Hey, you know, when 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 you have supposedly called Christians singing Christ we adore thee while they're throwing them in the ovens 
And they're saying the greatest commandment uh, to love the Lord your God with all their heart, mind, soul, and strength. All I'm saying is I, I am not in charge. I, yeah. I don't know. I, you know, it's like, who am I to say whether someone else's servant is going to be accepted? See, I don't believe it's my job to keep the book. I don't say who's in and who's out. I well, stay far do, away from how that. How do you handle by their fruits ye shall know them? Now, I think that's what's important. I think we can be fruit inspectors, so to speak. Okay. So, but all I know is it's above my pay grade to decide who's in and who's out. Mm -hmm. So after all this writing the book yes. and everything, where do you think the Antichrist will become? Will come from? Uh, you talking about a country, or are you talking about a denomination or religion? When you say, where does he come from? What's I, I guess? I'm what's saying, your thought? I'm saying, do you think he can, he's going to come from uh, the Middle East, from Europe, from okay. America, from location? Yeah, Palestine, Israel. I, again, for me, Mecca. I, uh, <laughs> I, I'm not sure. I, you know, the, the. The older I get, and the more I know, the more I realize I don't know. And, uh, exactly. But you're a brilliant guy. I mean, I, I mean, the, really. I mean, I reading this book, I'm going, man. Or he could be AI too, the way you said well, that. Well, it, it could be a human cyborg. Yeah, it could exactly. be someone who has both. Both. But as far as what region he comes from, I'm not sure. Uh, I think the problem comes when we become too narrowly focused in our opinion that it's this way and no other way. We miss it. Mm -hmm. Look at the time of Christ. They were. They knew it was the time for the Messiah, and they were arguing. Well, he's supposed to come out of Egypt. No, no, no. He's supposed to be called a Nazarene. No, no, no. He comes out of Beth. He's born in Bethlehem. Little did they know they were all right. They yeah. only had a part of the puzzle. Mm -hmm. And so for me... That's I, the decoding part. That's the decoding part. And so for me, it's like I have a part. I don't claim to know it all. But what I think people do need to know is they need to profile the Antichrist and look at legalized lawlessness so they can see the Antichrist system. And that way they can know when the Antichrist comes, they'll have a litmus test to be able to say, okay, this is who it is. So for me, it's providing people with the litmus test so that when he does arrive, they'll know. I like that legalized lawlessness because that's exactly yeah. what we see on that's the rise we, yeah. in this whole world, yeah. actually. Yes. Yeah. yes. Yep. And I can see that's where it would come from. That's, that's your next book cover. Yes, Legalized exactly. lawlessness. Oh, I love that. Thank you. I'll have to remember yeah. that. Yeah. Copyright it right now. Uh, okay, because somebody Herman. else will grab that. No, yeah. Somebody else will grab it. They're watching this. Okay. I've never heard people use that term, legalized lawlessness. I haven't either, but no. it's actually See, the... The Spirit exact. of God just gave you that. Thank right you. here on this show. <laughs> Through you. And and next time you're on Jim Baker, tell him that. <laughs> that okay. Your good friend, you and Jim Herman. Baker. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. Spend time in the Word of God. Read at least two chapters today. Yeah. Jesus Christ is the answer to every need you may have. God bless you. Bye-bye.